There's a great deal of confusion surrounding valve adjustment on the inline Jeep or AMC six-cylinder engines. Since 1971, and in that period there were some overlay years where it could be 1972 or 3 in some cases, the hydraulic lifters were non-adjustable on the AMC inline six-cylinder engines, and that's what prompted a question from one of our viewers. Mel did his own valve grind, and now he has a problem. Mel writes, I grind my own valves with an old Sioux valve grinder. I bought a 1990 Cherokee 4 liter and did a valve grind. Now, the seats are deeper and I have no idea how to adjust the valves. There is no provision at the rocker arms. What can I do? I'm not sure how deep the valves set. Mel's problem is typical. 1971 and up AMC inline six cylinder and later four cylinder engines have no provision for valve adjustment. That's not uncommon. There are other engine types that have similar features. When you grind the valves and shorten the valve faces or heads, at the same time digging into the seat enough to cause the valve to stand higher, if you will, above the top of the cylinder head, you close the valve clearance and take up vital clearance that the hydraulic lifters require. AMC and others enable that lifter to compensate for grinding the valve seat slightly, refacing the valve slightly, and for that reason you'll never find information in a factory workshop manual about resetting the stem heights or anything like that. In the automotive machinist environment, there have been ways to deal with this for many years. One method is to cut the stem heights to restore the height of the stem above the top side of the cylinder head and in the process restore the height of the valve stem to where it was originally. A special tool or guide was made for that. Years ago I remember grinding valves where we would use this bridging tool as a gauge, if you will, for measuring the stem height, going to the valve grinder, grinding the stem end, until we finally reached the right point and compensated for both the cutting of the valve face if the valve itself was refaced and for grinding into the valve seat which made the stem of the valve again stand higher. There are also other variables that affect the lifter clearance and that would be the cylinder head gasket thickness, milling of the cylinder head during remanufacturing or rebuilding of a head, decking the block. Any of those measures will do the equivalent of raising the valve stem or, if you will, lowering the rocker arm relationship to the camshaft. As the rocker arm moves toward the camshaft, the push rod becomes too long. The factory means for restoring lifter clearance are various length push rods. And again, that's not uncommon. Ford FE V8s and others use different length push rods to compensate for the valve clearances. There's a tool available, CompCam 7704-1. It's an adjustable push rod that you can use to, with the piston at top dead center and both valves closed, measure the amount of push rod length you need to just take the clearance out of the rocker arm. Not to push the plunger down in the lifter, but simply to take that clearance out. And then an additional turn of that push rod is approximately 50 thousandths of an inch. When you establish the plunger depth, which should be about approximately 50 thousandths of an inch set down into the lifter, 40 to 60 thousandths is considered a norm, and that's for the plunger to be just below the retainer, that 40 to 60 thousandths of an inch. Once you establish the proper push rod length to get that plunger in the lifter with the camshaft on the heel, or absolutely opposite the lobe high point to get that plunger to set at the right height. You then measure the push rod length and you get push rods of the correct length to compensate. There are aftermarket source push rods available in different lengths that cover the whole range of possibilities or reasonable possibilities for a Jeep engine. The best solution in this day and age is to get the right length push rods to make sure that the plunger is setting below its fully extended position the correct amount to ride in the lifter over the range of travel of the camshaft lobe. You may mill the head, you may deck the block, you may change the thickness of the head gasket, you may grind valve seats, you may grind valve faces, any of those things impact the pushrod length needs. The correct pushrod length is the best way to compensate for that. Another alternative Clifford used to make, I'm not sure if they're still available, you might look into this, adjustable pushrods with the same idea in mind. With the camshaft on the heel, meaning the lowest point on the lobe, 
opposite the high point on the lobe with the camshaft on the heel and both valves closed, you measure the amount of pushrod length that it takes for the hydraulic lifter to just zero out. In other words, not pushing the plunger down at all, but measuring a pushrod length that would go from the fully extended plunger in the lifter to the base of the rocker arm, then measuring the length of the pushrod and adding approximately 50 thousandths or so additional length to the pushrod so that the plunger rides that much below the fully extended position in the lifter. That's the means for adjusting the valves, if you will. The alternative in modern shops is to replace seats that are badly worn and in the process of replacing the valve seat to restore the original height of the valve seat. Installing new valves eliminates thinning out the valve faces. So there are means for establishing close to the original relationship of pushrod to rocker arm to camshaft lifter to the camshaft lobe of establishing that measurement close to factory, close enough that the lifter will compensate for the difference. Again, if you mill the head, deck the head, change the head gasket thickness, grind the valve seats, grind the valve faces, any of those measures require a pushrod length check and reestablishing the lifter plunger height with the use of the proper length pushrods. I'd like to talk for a minute about the symptoms of pushrod lengths that are too short or too long or tap it problems or tap it noises. First of all, with an engine that's never been apart before and had no tap it noise at all, if you develop tap it noise, it's probably lack of oil to the lifters, in which case the plungers are not staying at a float position within the lifter and the clearance is not taken up. If you have pushrod lengths that are too long after doing rebuild steps or any of the changes in parts that I was describing, the symptoms of that would be valves that are not able to come back to their seats completely and you'll literally have a misfire. Driven for any length of time with too little valve clearance, you will have issues with the engine actually burning valves or the cylinder head becoming damaged. A worst case scenario, if the valves are far enough off their seats, is that the valves will interfere with the pistons and if that happens you have a serious issue on your hands. Piston damage, bent valves and other parts damage can be very expensive. When you rebuild an engine or replace the hydraulic lifters for any reason do not fill the lifters with oil before assembling the engine. If you do the plungers will be fully extended and you can crank the engine over and actually cause the valves to interfere with the pistons because the pushrod is riding too high. It's okay to oil the lifter base with an engine assembly lube and even the side of the lifters, but don't soak them in oil. Don't plunge them until the lifters are full. If you do, you extend the plunger to its full position and cranking the engine over before the lifters bleed down can cause valve to piston interference and severe damage to your newly built engine. If for some reason the push rods are too short, in which case there would be lifter clearance, you will have tappet noise from the lifter plunger being fully extended and more clearance between that, the push rod and the rocker arm. If that's the case, you'll hear a clacking and the typical noise of too much rocker arm to valve stem clearance. Again, if that type of noise develops out of the blue, consider the fact that a lifter is malfunctioning and not able to hold the plunger in the proper position. That can be caused by lack of oil to the lifter. It can be caused by a defective lifter, too much clearance between the plunger and the bore of the lifter, a variety of reasons including camshaft lobes that are starting to wear or a lifter base that is worn. Any of those factors can enter into the picture. Assuming that the engine is oiling properly, that the lifters are in good condition, the clearance issues on the tappets are controlled strictly by the pushrod length, or if you will, the stem height of the valve. As a footnote to all of this, I would not install adjustable pushrods to compensate for one or two valve lifters that suddenly develop noise. In those circumstances would be poor oil flow, defective lifters or some other problem. And in that case, adjustable pushrods would be a band-aid remedy and not a solution in terms of the symptoms cause. Under no circumstances do you want to run pushrods that are so short that the plunger is extended to its maximum and there's still clearance between the pushrod and the rocker arm 
under those conditions. If you have measurable valve clearance with the lifter plunger fully extended, you're on the heel of the camshaft lobe when you're checking this, there's a problem. If the plunger is extended to its maximum, it can cause its retainer clip to pop out of position and the lifter literally comes apart. Trying to create a hydraulic lifter behaving like a clearanced mechanical tappet is not appropriate for hydraulic lifters. In effect, the term clearance does not apply to hydraulic lifters. What we're really striving for is plunger height within the lifter, and that's established as a preload or the height at which we choose to place that plunger in the lifter bore. As a final note to Mel, there's another issue that's been created by grinding the valve seats and causing the valve to move higher in the cylinder head. In the process of doing that, the springs for the valves are now longer when the valves are in a closed position than they were originally. And this results in less spring tension for seating the valves. So in a case like that, the spring tension needs to be reestablished. And even with new springs, the tension would be less than it should be with original valve seat depths and with the original thickness of the valve faces. So in this case, Mel's solution is to get shims that go underneath the valve springs between the valve spring seat and the spring that actually compress the spring to the original height and enable the spring to have the correct tension when closing the valve.